Why do I always come here? I guess I'll never know. It's like some kind of torture to have to watch the show. I am Haru Ren, welcome to my review of episode 7 of Bakugan Legends. So spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Bakugan Legends, episode 7. The first part is to catch a swarm. As the episode suggests, the awesome brawlers want to catch one of those swarm creatures. I don't see this going well, since the swarm has the power of chaos control and can teleport away the moment it's caught. But Winton wants to capture one of those because he wants to travel to Vestroya. But a tiny swarm creature teleports in that seems like it's just spamming its teleportation powers. And for the next 40 seconds of the runtime, it's just them trying to catch the swarm in a Tom and Jerry S style. Though, when the swarm teleports onto Magnus's head, it's genuinely genuinely pretty funny. Uh, no, don't you dare! How'd they get this thing in a cage? Why can't it just teleport away? By the way, even this and all the other swarm creatures, even though they have no lines of actual dialogue, they actually have a voice actor. Nilius' voice actor, Cory Doran. And the swarm creature teleports the awesome brawlers to random parts of the world, resulting in just near-death experiences. Run for your lives! This show is murder! <laughs> Uh, we'll get pneumonia! Big deal! This show always makes us sick! <laughs> but then the swarm teleports the awesome brawlers to the lair of the big swarm, and consequently, it is the lair of Hanoj. Turns out after being released, he transformed this prison that he was sealed in into his own castle. After my release, I turned it into my castle. Oh great, a good bit of trivia that doesn't make him any more interesting. So Hanoj challenges them to a fight, so I guess he just went all fine, I'll do it myself, Thanos style. What is that core? Wait, what? How'd you not know? You've seen it be used in the previous three rounds of the battle judgment, even by your own team. How do you not know about this? But I gotta admit, this is actually a pretty pitch and action sequence here. Just the awesome brawlers throwing all their new Nova techniques at Hanoj, but he just seems invincible. It's almost like that first boss encounter in a video game in the middle of the story. You learn he is very strong and make it seem like you have no hope in beating him at the end. The animation for this sequence is actually pretty cool. But in the middle, Shun, Winton, and Leah go find that tiny swarm that seems like it's actually scared of Hanoj. And a lot of the times watching this battle with Hanoj, it seems like they just have no hope of winning, and I'm just thinking, oh, they're dead. But Shun manages to attract the mini swarm with his tumpy keychain because the baby likes shiny things. If only the new Nova Reflector was ready by now. <sighs> This scene is actually pretty telling, and I think a lot of people are going to overlook it. It implies that Hanoj heard Athena, and I think Magnus' reaction implies he is aware that Hanoj knows. The important thing about this is the fact that they showed it twice to have the audience brain register the message without dialogue. And they even try to swerve it by having Shun show up at the next second. I think that this is a pretty well done way of conveying a foreshadowing. Whether or not this actually leads to anything is really for us to wait and see. So before Hanoj can line them up for a Falco punch, the swarm that Shun convinced takes them back to Los Volmos. We are saved! Thanks to this little guy. Yeah, but he got you in that predicament in the first place. The awesome brothers name him Buzzy and practically adopts him, and Magnus all of a sudden leaves the team. What? You're in the middle of the battle judgment! Then again, I don't think Magnus even had a match at all. As things stand, we don't have a chance against Hanoj. Okay, first of all, the colors of Magnus' jacket is wrong. It changed from black and gray overline to black and deep purple overline for some reason. But this really doesn't seem earned at all. Remember when Magnus and Dan had that huge argument? Well, they never at all played into that. There was never any indication that Magnus is drifting away from the others. Here, Magnus catches wind of Hanosha's realization and leaves because he thinks they now have no chance against him since he thinks Hanosh knows about the Nova Reflector. So the guy that was leading the charge against the monster that wants to destroy the world is now abandoning his squad because it's gotten too hard. And when he leaves, he doesn't leave on a bad note, and the Awesome Brothers don't seem phased by him leaving. Like, whatever. 
But on a positive note, though, look at this facial expression. Being animated like this while Julius is delivering the dialogue, it displays Magnus's fear and frustration that maybe Magnus is leaving to find a new way to defeat Hanoj, considering his loner character and the fact that Sal Morayama likes to avoid writing Magnus's growth on screen, it wouldn't be out of the question. But pretty much the last minute of this part was probably one of the most impactful, even if Magnus leaving seemingly was an out of nowhere moment. The next part is the show must go on. It's like Buzzy is a big fan of Dan's hair. Oh my god, I'm already bored. My mom's show is on. Like my mom says, the show must go on. Be sure to tune in next week when our guest will be our very own local superstar Cabo. Ah, no! So, Leah's mom, voiced again by Anna Sani, asked the Awesome Brawlers to appear at the end of her Veronica's Room show. I guess she's doing park stage shows now? Also, where are the cameras here at this park to actually air this on TV? So, Cabo is talking crap about Strata and even making up falsified stories about how he's the one that taught and saved the Awesome Brawlers many times, even before they were battling, even though anyone with a functioning brain can piece the lies together. They were famous and battling long before this abomination ever came into this franchise. God, this is stupid! Dan, unable to take Cabo stealing the credit for saving the world many times and falsifying stories about them, wants to go Will Smith on Cabo's ass. Let's go stop this now! If you do that, you'll ruin my mom's show! I guarantee you, it'll just make the ratings skyrocket. In my best ever Chris Tucker impression, SHOOT HIS ASS, DAN! SHOOT HIS ASS! My show is all about telling the truth! You're ruining it with your horrible lies! See? It's already ruined! Beat his ass, Dan! Also, I don't know if this is intentional or not, I'm going with yes. Veronica's face here is horrifyingly hilarious. But then, Strata comes in and confronts Cubbo after hearing Cubbo's lies. Really, Strata is the real hero of this episode. Strata heard Cubbo talking crap about him on live TV, so he clearly came here to either hurt him or prove him wrong. Now, obviously, I don't condone violence, and this episode is clearly trying to teach you to not go seeking trouble, even if someone's talking crap about you. But Strata is literally the victim here, seeking street justice. What he's doing is actually kind of understandable. Honestly, when you start making me cheer and smile for Strata of all characters, you have screwed up! Oh no! Mom's show will be ruined! What do you mean? It was already ruined! Strata just saved the show! Also, Dan Petronadrivik's Havoc voice is starting to blend into Strata's voice. Hello, Cabo! I heard you talking about me! It was true mayhem and distraction! The third-rate Bakugan hunter you scared out of his boots? This is the real power! I possess Dan Kuzo! So Dan and Leah appear through Buzzy's teleportation to stop Strata, making it seem like it's part of the show, especially the way Jonah and Margarita speak their dialogue. Let the Bakugan Brawl show begin! You're our problem! Bullies have no place on this stage! What do you mean? Strata's not the bully here. Cubbo was the one talking crap about him. Ever heard of the expression, talk shit, get hit? We've reached the climax of our show! Jesus, their eyes have shrunk! Send help! They beat Strata with their Nova technique. I don't care! And Dan and Drago confront Cubbo's false stories to close out the episode. I'm sorry! I was so excited to let my stories get out of hand! But you know, that apology was a lie, too! Oh, never mind. Dan and Drago still fall for Cubbo's fake tears like suckers to end the episode. What a piece of crap! So that was episode 7 of Bakugan Legends. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was a lame episode. The first part where they accidentally confront Hanosh was the only decent parts of the episode, but it all just went downhill from here. Clearly there is some important plot point from introducing Buzzy as a pet, as well as the part where Hanosh reacted after Athena's comments about the Nova Reflector, but with the pointless Cabo episode that made the character less likable and somehow you made Strata the more likable character here, you all definitely messed up bad. Couldn't you have made Cabo actually put up a fight against Strata or maybe in the end Cabo gets exposed for being a coward which makes his fans turn against him because it exposed him as a liar? But this really didn't make anyone look good in my opinion. It was pointless filler made even more pointless with that ending. So, this episode gets a Baku Downer. This show is awful. Terrible. Disgusting. See you next week? Of course. <laughs>
thank you for watching this review of Bakugan Legends. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!